Okay, we're given a trigonometric function and asked to find its inverse. So I'm gonna walk through the four steps that have worked for finding inverse functions for me for quite a while. Your steps may differ very slightly, but to find inverses, I like these four steps. Step number one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace f of x with y. So with our original given function, it was f of x on the left-hand side. It's now gonna be y on the left-hand side is equal to 10 multiplied by sine of x plus five. Pretty easy step. Next step is we are going to switch all of our x's and y's. Switch our x's and y's. Basically what that means is where you see a y, it's gonna become an x. Where you see an x, it's gonna become a y. So that's x equals 10 multiplied by sine of y plus five. Our third step, and then this is the one that has most of the algebra going on. Our goal is to solve for y. Get y on one side all by itself. So as we get going on this, I notice that y is trapped inside of the sine function. So let's get rid of the 10 and the five from around it first and isolate the sine of y. So the first thing I wanna move to the other side is the five. So we're gonna subtract five from both sides. That'll leave us with 10 times the sine of y over on the right-hand side. And those are connected with multiplication. So the next thing I wanna to do to isolate the sine of y is to move the 10 to the other side by using division. So I'm gonna divide both sides by 10. So now we're at x minus five, all divided by 10 equals the sine of y. All right, to get y out from inside of the sine function, the next step is we want to apply a sine inverse function to both sides. So in applying that inverse function, that's gonna counteract the sine function, the original sine function over here on the right-hand side, thus giving us y on one side all by itself. So y equals sine inverse of x minus five over 10. The very last step here, step number four, is we're gonna replace y with f inverse of x. So we've done all the real algebra here. Now we just have to indicate that our inverse function is instead of y over on the right-hand side, f inverse of x. And we've completed our task. We found the inverse of f. All right, hope this helps out as you're working through understanding how to find inverse functions. If you stick to these four steps, you can, uh, you can get where you need to go on finding inverse functions. Good luck.